Hey everybody, I'm Roberto Baldo and I'm here with Ford CEO Mark Fields. Mark, thanks for coming out and talking to me today. How are you doing? All right, thanks for having me, Roberto. So you, this is, you've been here since 2007. This is, and you guys were one of the, the, the first car company at CES? Yeah, we were the first car company come, to come to CES in 2007. And uh, let's just say it's amazing to see in the last eight or nine years how much automotive has now had a presence here. And, and we use this show to really talk about you know, what we're doing on the technology space, but also more importantly, how we're moving from an auto company to an auto company and a mobility company. But it's a great venue for us. So talk a little bit about the, your, your guys' smart mobility pilot. Uh, I know you, you have it in a few cities. When can we expect uh, these, this, and, and, more, and larger cities, San Francisco, LA, New York, et cetera? Well, we launched our smart, uh, Ford Smart Mobility Plan last year, and as part of that is we launched 25 experiments around the world. And through half of last year, we decided to focus on two specific areas. One is flexible use and ownership, and the other is what we call multimodal urban mobility solutions, or how to get people across cities to and from ci in, in, within a city. And on the flexible use and ownership, we have a pilot in London going on right now. It's called Go Drive. And it's essentially one-way cars that you can use with guaranteed parking in London, which if you know London, that's, that's a pretty good deal. Yeah. And you pay, pay as you go. And we've learned a lot from that. And we're probably going to start expanding that to other cities. We're going through the planning process right now. We also have, uh, we, we're also doing something we call Dynamic Shuttle, which we started in London and now we're doing in our Dearborn campus. Mm -hmm. And it's um, basically using a transit van, allowing people to share in a, in, a, in, a, in a wagon going from place to place. And we learned a number of things there. So it's really about piloting. And if we see an unmet need, and if we see a business model that allows mm -hmm. us to make a good return on it, we'll pursue it. And so we, you know, when we talk about these uh, car sharing programs, we're usually talking about larger cities. What about these medium-sized cities like the Bakersfields of the world? Do you, do you, or, or even like small town, like series of small towns along the eastern seaboard. Is that something you guys are also in investigating? Well, we're focusing right now on the, the large cities because, to be quite honest, that's where the demand is right now. If you live in a large metropolitan area, a lot of folks want access versus ownership, either because practically they, they don't have a parking space or they can't afford it. And going forward, cities are going to get you know, even more and more, I think, uh, vigilant on congestion charges and things of that nature. That's where we see a lot of the demand right now. It doesn't mean it won't go to other smaller cities, mm -hmm. but that's where we're focusing our pilots right now. And so as Ford as a company, you know, we have the, the, the core Ford Motor Company. Do you see mobility as its own division? Do you see it eventually you know, becoming large enough to spin off as its own company? Well, this is the exciting thing. This is how we're thinking about the business. We have our core business. Our core business is designing, developing, manufacturing, and marketing terrific cars, SUVs, trucks, and electrified vehicles. And we're going to love that business, and we're going to invest in it, keep investing in it, and keeping being a leader there. Then we have these emerging opportunities, which really fall into the category of emerging mobility services, enabled by technology. So we're, we're obviously putting a lot of effort into that, but we view that as not moving from an old business to a new business. It's just moving to a bigger business. And how we structure that going forward, mm -hmm. haven't really thought through yet because we're just getting started on this. But we're really thinking of it as one being complementary for the other. Mm -hmm. and, like a lot of current car share programs, uh, like car to go they're using the, the, you know, the smart. Uh, um, do you, for Ford, do you guys see a fleet car, like a, or do you see multiple vehicles? You see, like, maybe someone needs an F-150 to get, from, you know, I got to go to Home Depot, pick up some stuff, or, you know, my job involves me carrying large things and I need a Ford Escape. It's, like, what are you guys' thoughts on those? Well, I think it could go a lot of different ways. Our pilot, our pilot right now is just, you know, basically a, a car sharing. I mentioned our Go Drive program. But we've also experimented things with car swapping. Mm -hmm. Like your, your, your example, if somebody needed an F-150 pickup truck on the weekend, they could swap with another person. We've experimented with that. I mean, there's a whole wide open field here right now. And again, it's, it's, it's experimenting, see if there's enough of a need or a market demand, and then also determining is there a business rationale for pursuing that. Cool. And one of the, the, the things you guys are experimenting with, and really everyone is, and we're hearing a lot about it, is autonomous driving. Now, this year at CES, I think everyone's done a really good job of sort of tempering the expectations 
I think for the last year, people have thought that you could get an autonomous car in like three years. Um, but as, you know, it, maybe it's 5, 10, 15, 20 years in the future, what do you see as the autonomous car of the future? Do you see like a series of pod cars or do you see, you know, hybrid cars? It's, it's a pod car, but also you can drive it on the weekend to, to wine country or yeah. up the coast. You know, I think we have to be, uh, I think the, the term autonomous vehicle has been thrown around pretty liberally. Yeah. And I think, you know, just being able to define it appropriately, there's five levels of autonomy as defined by the Society of Automotive Engineers. The first three levels really require the driver to be prepared to step in. For example, level one is adaptive cruise control. Mm -hmm. uh, level two is what we call uh, traffic jam assist, where if you're in traffic jams, the vehicle will, will speed up, it'll slow down. Level three is something like the Tesla autopilot. We are shooting for level four. And level four is basically in a geofenced or a predefined area, the driver does not have to be prepared to step in. Mm -hmm. And we see in the industry that somebody in the industry may come out with one of those in the next four years or so by the mm -hmm. end of the decade. We're working on it. We haven't announced a date yet, but when we do come out on it, with it, we want to make sure it works, it's safe, and just as importantly, that it's accessible for everyone and not just folks who can afford luxury cars. Yeah. And as we think through the vehicle applications, would it be kind of a hybrid with sometimes you could drive it on your own, sometimes it'll drive a, a, autonomously or just dedicated autonomously? Those are the things we're thinking through. And so with the, uh, what about like partnerships? Like a lot of companies are now talking about, well, we're, we're researching, we have our own research. I mean, are you guys open to partnering with other companies, whether it be another OEM, whether it be a technology company, just to help sort of inform your autonomous research? Absolutely. Even in our core business today, we do a lot of, our, a lot of project partnerships. We do small engines with some other automakers, some transmissions, those type of things. But absolutely, in this space, we have said, in some cases, we will do things on our own, and in other cases, we will partner with others. Because we have to be really clear on what, what are our core competencies, mm -hmm. and what can we deliver that's right for the customer, and also reach out to other partners who may do things much better than us in some other ways, or mm -hmm. we don't do it at all, and be able to partner. And that's one of the things that we've learned as we've set up our research center in Palo Alto. It is about developing relationships and seeing if you can develop partnerships that are mutually beneficial. Cool. Uh, and you know, you announced a partnership uh, yesterday with Amazon, with the Echo, you have the AppLink. You'll be able to either in your house start the car or from the car turn on your lights, open your garage, lock the doors. Um, do you, do you see the, the, the car and the home becoming a, like one giant super gadget? Well, what we see is the why of Ford Murder Company is to make people's lives better. And that really drives everything that we do. So when we're looking at uh, the integration of smart devices and working with Amazon in this case, it's around how do you make the vehicle actually work even more for you in integrating into your life and making your life easier. So in the case of uh, the smart devices in the home, you know, the demand for that is growing wildly. Mm -hmm. I think we, there was a survey a couple of weeks ago that 50% of the respondents said, you know what, yeah, in the next 12 months, I'm going to buy a smart device. So how do we use the vehicle and a Ford vehicle mm -hmm. to empower customers, give them more convenience, and do it in a way that's unique to owning a Ford vehicle? So I think you'll see more and more of that from us going forward. Cool. Is there any concern that the Ford brand will end up sort of being buried in within these partnerships? Or do you see the Ford brand as like the iPhone? You have the iPhone, but it has a billion apps that works with it. Like, what do you, how do you, how do you want to make, how do you want to make sure that Ford stays front and center of what, what people are, are, are seeing when they buy a car? Or well, just see it on the street? Well, our brand is very, very important to us. And at the end of the day, remember, it's a vehicle. So that, that, is, what we, that, that, that is what we do. And we want to make sure that the Ford brand is very prominent and that it is a Ford vehicle, but it also happens to do these other things you know, associated with a number of other brands. So that's extremely important for us to be able to nurture the brand and be able to have that brand identity and not turn into, let's say, a handset maker. Mm -hmm. And so, and, and talk about the, the, the connectivity and autonomy. I mean, those are big things in Silicon Valley. In San Francisco, it's, it, it's just in the air. You can't, 
But for the people in the rest of the country, are they are they are they clamoring for this? Do you, do you guys have any research? Is, or are you are you talking to customers who are like, you know what? I live in the middle of Kansas. Maybe an autonomous car would be awesome. I want you know I want a smart car. Is that or is this something you, you're looking at as sort of a trickle down effect? It starts in the big cities and then moves out to the rest. Well, we are seeing it's different levels of demand depending upon the cities. When you look at, uh, but what you do see across the world, whether it's large cities or even medium-sized cities, you know, there's traffic. And the most boring part of driving is when people are going to and from work and they're stuck in traffic or it's stop and go. And a lot of customers are saying, you know what, during that time I could be productive doing other things. And if I had an autonomous vehicle and it allowed me to do work or do emails or text safely, they're really, really open to that. So I do think you know there there's going to be demand, whether it's a large city, a small city, but clearly it'll depend, and there'll be greater levels in more congested areas than others. Cool. And so, you know, you guys also have to have like the, the larger van division, the Econo lines, the, the, that sort of thing. Do those do you see those as, as ripe for autonomy? Because those are they're, they're really, you know, they're they're delivery things. You know, uh, we absolutely do, and we have uh, obviously the Econoline has served us well for many, many years. We replaced that last year with our Transit van, which is which is doing terrific. We actually had a record year for van sales in 2015 with our Transit. But you're exactly right. When you look at the commercial applications of autonomy, you know, think about a predefined route that a truck has to do every day. Mm -hmm. Think about the possibilities that out, that opens up for autonomy. And we're very strong in trucks, so clearly those are some of the things that we're thinking about. Cool. And selling the customer on the safety aspect, do you think there's, for as, as an automaker, is it is that an uphill battle, like to train people to 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 trust a, a robot, to trust a car? Because we've we've all seen 2001, yeah. we've all seen war games, we've all seen our computer <laughs> crash. <laughs> Is that is that going to be like is that the toughest thing? Yeah, I remember that Whopper machine in War. Yeah, the Whopper. <laughs> uh, well, you know, it, it's it's very interesting because consumers more and more are getting used to semi-autonomous features in our vehicles, uh, features that will keep you in your lane, that will automatically parallel or perpendicular park your car, um, that will you know adaptive cruise control that will slow your vehicle down. But I, I, the analogy I would use is think about when cruise control was originally introduced in the industry years and years ago. People originally thought, oh my gosh, I'm going to trust my, my 4,000 pound vehicle when I'm going 70 miles an hour in the fast lane on the highway to slow down if it, if it comes behind another vehicle. Think about today. People don't give that a second thought. Yeah. So I really think that as, as we implement autonomous vehicles and do it in an intuitive way, consumers will warm to it. Cool. Well, thank you so much, Mark, for coming out and talking to us today. I uh, hope you have a nice CES. It is definitely very car heavy, not um, completely unlike 2007 when it was just you guys. Yeah. Uh, everyone enjoy CES. Great. Thank you.